Master to Grant. Yummy, 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 yummy. Today marks a new adventure for our eight-year-old son, Nathan. He's starting his first full day at his new school. I can't send Nathan to school if I can't see him. There he is. Nathan was two years old when we adopted him, and at the time we were never under any illusion that things would be easy. Who was made in my heart? I love you. You were made in my heart, weren't you? You were made in my heart. You don't take a child away from their parents unless it's a really good reason. So often they've been abused, neglected, and these children are really traumatised. And that trauma is what then later begins to make for behavioural issues. Yeah, well, Trying to fit into mainstream education can be really difficult for adoptive children. And sadly, that's what happened with Nathan at his previous school. Look at me, I'm not doing my job. I find, I find the page turner. You know, in Nathan's case, someone knocks his building tower over, he'll punch them. And unfortunately for Nathan, it was those kinds of situations that meant he was constantly being taken out of class. The parents started a WhatsApp group so that they could speak about Nathan. And then someone advised them that the way to get the best result was to get a petition to have Nathan excluded from the school. So it was decided that he would have to go to a different school, a specialist school, and that wasn't our choice. So I want you to have the best day ever. Each adopted child has their own story. While many won't struggle with behavioural issues and sell through their education, a recent survey suggests adopted kids are still 20 times more likely to be permanently excluded from school than their classmates. I'm keen to meet other adoptive parents with similar experiences to us, so I've come to Beach Lodge School in Berkshire, which specialises in supporting adopted children. Right, do you think of a silly thing to no, this? Uh, it was founded by Daniela Shanley after her 14-year-old son Dom was excluded from three different schools. What was it like at school for Dom? It was full of anxiety. He was a very dysregulated little boy and underpinning on that was attachment difficulties. What was he doing behaviourally? He would throw things, he would spit, he would um, be violent to other children. My son's teacher said, this isn't the right school for your son and there isn't a right school for your son. Really the system beat me. Um, so th Same here. So that's why I set up the school. Hey, how many do we need of those? Four for the heart. Tell me the, some of the different things, why it's different from mainstream. We group children in cohorts according to emotional age rather than actually chronological age. Most of our classrooms are very low stimulation. We also have a speech and language therapist to help them develop relationships. I want to hear from the kids what difference they think this approach makes to them. If I had something inside me, I couldn't go and tell someone, so I keep it inside me, just get me really angry and worked up. So what's it like in this school? If I'm upset with something, I can go and talk to the teacher and they understand. It's easier to make friends and people don't like judge as much and there's less bullying than there was at my last school. The teachers understand you more, you feel more free, you don't feel trapped. We don't know how separating our kids from their peers now will affect their future. Despite this, adoptive mums Anna and Rachel still feel it's the best option for their children. My son wouldn't cope in a mainstream school, so what do you do? He couldn't cope there. Here he can cope. And all those social skills, they're coming. I tried to mix it up out of school by taking George to different groups, going swimming, going to CrossFit, doing things with other children. Do you feel that schools are under too much pressure to meet the needs of these children? Yes. How can one teacher be an expert in, in all those children's different needs? Colborne Primary in Birmingham is one mainstream school trying to tackle the issue head on. That's where you get all the attachment difficulties. That's where you get their inability to regulate their emotions. Head teacher Stuart Guest has been training his staff on attachment and trauma for the last four years. So as a school we've introduced a number of attachment friendly approaches such as not having behaviour charts at the front of the classroom which can induce shame, having a homework approach that enables children to succeed and not berating them if they don't bring it in. Since we've introduced these approaches we've noticed a significant improvement in behaviour and a reduction in the use of exclusions. Back home, I'm keen to find out how Nathan's day went at his new school. How was it? Good. Yeah, what did you do? I guess the big question is, you know, the 18 children in Nathan's school, 30 children in the school that I went to see today. What about the thousands of others? 